Hey dudes and dudettes, you read that title right. It's the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, and I'm gonna tell you why I think it's the best of the Star Wars films. I have a really bad feeling about this. No, it'll be okay. Just hear me out, and by the end of the video, I'll show you something that might completely alter how you see The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, we're getting pretty heavy here. There's that word again, heavy. So to start off, I realize if you ask most people what their favorite Star Wars movie is, you're gonna get a wide range of responses. Some of the younger generation likes the prequels, I even like The Phantom Menace, Jar Jar Binks notwithstanding. Most people I've talked to prefer The Empire Strikes Back, and from someone who has a video production background, I totally get it. It's the best directed, written, and acted Star Wars film. I think for a lot of people, it's the most emotional, with Vader revealing he's Luke's father. Oh yeah, spoiler alerts if you haven't seen these movies yet for some odd reason. Whoops, whoopsie. Also, this film has the best romantic tension between Han and Leia. So if you rage in the comments how wrong I am and how dare I say there's a better Star Wars film than Empire, look, I completely understand. Also, I'm not gonna even address the new films. They stink, pure and simple, with the exception of Rogue One. That film surprised me, and not just because it falls into the same timeline as the original trilogy, it was the characters actually having a story arc. Shocker, I know. Rey has no story arc. She's perfect nearly the entire time. She has no faults other than being boring. Jen Erso has a character arc, a hero's journey. She starts as someone who is disconnected from others and fends for herself, and by the end of the movie, she sacrifices her life for the rebellion and her friends. So much better than plain vanilla Rey. Anywho, back to Return of the Jedi. So my wife and I decided to show our kids the original trilogy for the first time. If you ask my mother-in-law her favorite Star Wars film, it's A New Hope. She was there for the opening night at the theater, and it left a huge impression on everyone. I get it. Having said that, my kids only made it through the first third of that film and gave up. My dad's favorite film was Empire, my wife's too. We showed it to our kids, and they made it through about halfway. Obviously, the next one was Return of the Jedi. My youngest son watched quite a bit of it, and my older two boys stayed the entire time. They were asking questions. They were wondering if Vader would turn to the light side. They even loved the Ewoks. What's interesting is when my dad saw this film, he was an adult by that time. He hated the Ewoks, and I saw a similar pattern with the prequels. Adults hated Jar Jar, but I was there for the Phantom Menace on opening night, and while I was staring at the screen in disbelief as Gungan spit all over the place, we should no care. I did notice little children in the theater laughing and staying in their seats. I think a lot of people forget that George Lucas wanted a younger audience to connect with the films too. Lucas was heavily invested in the toys and merchandise since the beginning. Now, I was a kid when I first saw Return of the Jedi. It was at a point in my life when we lived in a well-forested area in the San Bernardino Mountains. I was building a tree fort in my backyard. I always wanted to go to the Redwoods. And later in my life, I visited the filming locations of Return of the Jedi at Owen Cheatham Grove. The point is, the Ewoks actually resonated with me. I also like how it shows the good-natured people of the Rebellion are willing to sacrifice to befriend the primitive locals on Endor, whereas the Empire just sees them as target practice. That attitude ends up turning the tide in the favor of the Rebellion, of course. Another thing I love about this film is the speeder chase. I think it's one of the best scenes ever recorded to film. The sound design was pitch perfect as well. The stakes are high. The Rebellion doesn't want their cover blown with their attack on the shield generator, and these runaway scout troopers could end all of that. It features the Skywalker siblings taking on their enemies with the most satisfying crashes. And we get to see some lightsaber action too. Always a good thing. I am getting a little ahead of myself. I know that some people complained about the Tatooine scene at the beginning with Jabba the Hutt. I feel like what the story was trying to do here was reestablish the characters, show Luke's growth from the first two films, and introduce new lore, like the Rancor. A lot of people saw Leia's space bikini wardrobe as problematic, and I understand their first impressions. It wasn't until later in life when it dawned on me that this was the ultimate insult to a princess to be treated like a slave, with a chain around her neck, with little clothing to cover her. If nothing else, it helped Leia understand the humiliation and deprivation associated with being the lowest member of society, and I would venture to say it made her a more compassionate leader in the future towards everyone. I will say that I absolutely hated when Lucas went back and added this music number to the original movie. It adds nothing to the story, and it's an absolute ear bleeder. The real meat and potatoes of this movie, however, is the climax of the film. The battle between father and son is entirely gut-wrenching. It's a brutal reminder of how good and evil can divide a family and what it means to join a cause. 
When the John Williams score swells and the choir hauntingly sings in the background, it's cinema magic. Of course, we also have the final punch of the movie, which is blowing up the Death Star once and for all. The timing of the editing and the scope of the space battles is worthy of the word epic. This part of the movie is such a crowd pleaser, but instead of rolling to credits, Lucas decided to add some more icing on the cake by showing us the celebrations around the galaxy, a later addition to the movie I actually agree with. It's the death of the Empire as we know it, and the entire galaxy was under their oppressive rule. So yeah, definitely cause for celebration. And most importantly, we get to see the smiles and satisfaction on the faces of our heroes. We also get to see Anakin standing by Obi-Wan and Yoda, finally being at peace. So yeah, this might not be everyone's favorite Star Wars film, but it's certainly my favorite. It's one the whole family can enjoy, and I think it's the most rewatchable. But let me know your favorite film in the comment section. I'd love to hear your reasons too. Also, I did say I'd show you something that would change the way you see Empire Strikes Back. Are you ready for it? Okay, here it goes. The seat belts on the snow speeders have bubble wrap sewed to them. This will either make you feel like Star Wars is cheap and childish, or like me, you feel like the filmmakers used everything available to them to make these great movies work. So yeah, I hope I didn't just ruin your childhood. I don't believe it. And with that, have an awesome day, and may the Force be with you. Mmm, that was some seriously good nostalgia. But remember friends, it's also important to make new memories with your loved ones.